Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over a feature in systemd called the debug shell. But before we get started here, I just want to make it very clear that this is an extra topic that I'm covering, and it's not directly associated with any actual RHCSA exam objectives. So I want you to adjust your perspective accordingly. Now, the point of talking about the debug shell is that I think it's just a useful thing to be aware of. Alright? So then, what is the debug shell? Well, if the name didn't already give it away, it's a powerful root shell session that's always open, without authentication, on the local console, and it helps you debug problems. What's special about the debug shell is that it gives you a dedicated TTY to operate on the system when you otherwise might not be able to. Now, it should be pretty clear at this point that this is not something you just decide to keep enabled in a production setting, it's just for troubleshooting. So, without further ado, let me show you how to boot the system with the debug shell enabled, and in what cases it might be helpful. Alright, so I've got my VM here, it's turned off right now, so we'll power on the machine, and make sure to mash the F8 key so that we can get to the grub screen. Then just press E to edit the first boot entry, scroll down to the Linux line as usual, and press Ctrl E to jump the cursor to the end. Then we're just going to want to type in systemd.debug-shell, just like that, and press Ctrl X to boot with those parameters. Once the system boots up, you can switch to the debug shell by sending the keystrokes Control alt f 9 to the VM. Now notice I said send, not press. I'm not saying you should necessarily press those keys on your keyboard, because if you're using a Linux host, it's likely going to kick you out of your graphical console if you do that. Rather, we'll want to send those keystrokes to the machine like this. So, if you're using Vert Manager, you can just go up here to this menu that says Send Key, and then pick Control alt f 9 and now you're good to go. But, if you're using VirtualBox, you can do something very similar by using the Soft Keyboard. So, I'll make sure to show a picture of how you can get to the Soft Keyboard just for your reference. And anyways, now you'll see here that we have a root shell prompt, and there was no password required. So now let's just talk about an example scenario where this could be useful, like resetting a missing root password, but just keep in mind that there are other more established ways to reset the root password, such as interrupting the init ramfs. But yeah, after booting up with the debug shell as explained, you can simply type in password at the prompt, and then just follow the typical steps to reset the root password. There we go. And what's cool about this technique is that you don't need to correct any SE Linux type context labels on files like etc shadow, because the SE Linux subsystem is already fully operational in this state, so it's handling that stuff in the background for you. I can just run get enforce just to show you that it's enforcing and it's all good. And now let's go ahead and take this a step further and see how to troubleshoot a system that's hanging on startup with one of those annoying systemd start job messages, right? So let's say that you've got a unit file that isn't starting properly, or one that's holding up your system from shutting down. And this could happen sometimes with mounting file systems and there being a configuration error, or some source of unresponsiveness um, along the way. So in these cases, the debug shell can help you quickly investigate what's happening and take action. So to simulate such a scenario, I've prepared an evil unit file that's going to get in the way of our machine starting up smoothly. So it's called infinite delay .service. So here's just a look at it if you want. And it's not like this is the most well-written unit file in the world, and that's because it's not supposed to be. It's just going to simulate a problem for us. So I'll go ahead and install it now by just copying it to etc system d system just like that and then we're going to want to run system ctl daemon dash reload and now it's recognized and now all i need to do is just enable the service with system ctl enable infinite delay dot service and now it's enabled 
Okay, so what I'll do next is just reboot the system, and I'm going to make sure to mash the F8 key again, so I can be a little proactive here and add the debug shell parameter one more time. So systemd.debug-shell, we'll boot up with that. And yeah, um, now as you can see, we have this problematic unit file here that's holding everything up, and it has no time limit to get started. So normally when you run into this problem and you don't have the debug shell available, there's nothing you can really do but send a reboot signal to the machine because this console that we're seeing here is not interactive. I can't press something like Control c and expect it to cancel the job and keep going or anything like that. And all of the other virtual TTYs have not been spawned yet, so it's not like I can switch to those either and log in. However, uh, we can still switch to the special debug terminal that we just enabled with Control alt f 9 and that's going to work just fine. So now over here, I can just run a systemctl list-jobs to see what's going on, what's open. And yeah, here's the problem, infinite delay.service. It's still running, and uh, every, everybody else is just waiting for it. And so now I can just uh, proactively disable this service with systemctl disable infinite underscore delay dot service just like that and then i can just go ahead and run a system ctl stop or i can also run kill on it if i need to to get the unit file out of the way so that's infinite delay dot service and now that it's killed bam we're back in business okay so here's some key takeaways Remember that the debug shell feature should only be used for debugging. It gives you full root access to anybody with local terminal access, I guess. So it should be disabled once you're done troubleshooting. And yeah, uh, I hope this video was helpful. See you next time.